We continue to follow two big stories this morning. First, breaking news in Norfolk. Two people are hurt after an overnight fire at an apartment building. We are live from the scene. Plus, the persistent rain. Portions of our area still under a flood watch. Other parts where that rain could freeze are under a winter weather advisory. We're on your side with the latest forecast and road conditions. First, we want to get to that breaking news in Norfolk. Dispatchers tell us the fire broke out in the West Ocean View area of the city. Our Kiana Patterson joins us live now from the scene. And Kiana, you spoke with one of the victims who was pulled from that fire. Yes, a woman and her three-year-old daughter were pulled from this apartment behind me. Um, they were taken to the hospital and examined for smoke inhalation, and they are okay. She's back here now trying to see if there's anything that she can salvage from her belongings that were also pulled from inside of the apartment and placed outside here. Um, and she's working and trying to see if there's anything to take from that pile. Now take a look at this video. This is from earlier in the morning. Um, crews were here for about three hours working to make sure that the fire was completely out. Some of the windows were shattered and now they are plastered up and you can see a sign on those windows that say that this this unit now is unfit for living. So she has to now find somewhere else to stay. She does tell me that the American Red Cross is assisting her and she's also waiting, um, you know, on family members to come out and help her as well. Now, in the last 30 minutes or so, we've seen more people come out. It looks like the maintenance or um, landlord of the apartment complex is here now examining some of the damage as well. And um, we also know that the Norfolk fire is investigating the cause of the fire. In Norfolk, Kiana Patterson, 10 on your side. We are going to continue following this breaking story throughout the morning and send you any updates through the Wavy News app. Today, we are expected to learn more about Virginia's COVID-19 vaccine distribution plan. The state's vaccine coordinator, Dr. Danny Avula, is set to give an update to the media at 3 o'clock this afternoon. It comes as winter weather across the country causes a delay in the delivery of vaccine shipments to the Commonwealth. We'll have full coverage starting on Wavy News 10 at 4. More teachers in Chesapeake will get the COVID-19 vaccine today. The shot is voluntary. Teachers in Chesapeake started getting vaccines last month before some students returned to classrooms for in-person learning. Superintendent Dr. Jared Cotton has said the shots are another layer of protection for teachers and staff. Today, the superintendent of Suffolk Public Schools will answer your questions about the school reopening plan. The school board recently voted to bring some students back to in-person learning starting March 15th. Dr. John B. Gordon III will host a Facebook Live at 2 this afternoon on the district's Facebook page. And you can submit your questions ahead of the live chat. We have information on the Suffolk meeting and chat with the superintendent on wavy.com. All new this morning, we're getting a better picture of the very crowded race for Virginia governor. The Wasson Center for Civic Leadership at Christopher Newport University released a new poll this morning showing who Virginia voters are supporting nearly eight months before Election Day. Our Lex Gray is in the newsroom to break down those numbers now. Lex? Well, the Wasson Center surveyed about 1,000 registered voters in Virginia over the last two weeks. The biggest takeaway from this new poll is that most are undecided. However, some key contests are emerging as Virginia Republicans and Democrats begin to sort out their party's nominations. Starting with Republicans, the woman you just saw, State Senator Amanda Chase leads the field, polling at about 17 percent. She is followed by former Virginia House Speaker Kirk Cox at 10 percent. Entrepreneur Pete Snyder rolled in third. 55 percent of Republicans say they're undecided. For Democrats, former Governor Terry McAuliffe has a significant lead. He's polling at about 26 percent. Lieutenant Governor Justin Fairfax is second, polling at 12 percent. No other candidate polled at more than 5 percent. 49 percent of Democratic voters polled say they are undecided right now as well. There is much more detail to this poll, including data in the race for lieutenant governor. You can find the full report on wavy.com. Don and Katie. Lex, thank you. Our time, 836. We have more to come on Wavy News 10 on Fox 43. That includes a new Don't Get Mad, Get Madison segment. Madison gets answers for a neighbor in Portsmouth worried about speeders. And rain, rain, go away. Meteorologist Jeremy Wheeler shows us how much longer we'll have to endure this wet weather. That is coming up next in your Super Doppler 10 forecast.
Now, your Super Doppler 10 forecast from meteorologist Jeremy Wheeler. That's the view of the James River Bridge right now. We got lots of clouds. We got some drizzle and a little bit of light rain. And we have a lot of precipitation over the whole area. It's mostly rain, a little bit of mixed precip up there, northern Gloucester County, northern James City County. And this little patch has been in here for a while around Suffolk. I think it's overdone, but you may have a little bit of sleet still falling there uh, or a couple of wet snowflakes. But right now, I think it's just rain. So uh, rain chances are high today all the way through the midday hours. 70% chance of rain at 2 p.m., 40% chance at 5 o'clock, and a slight chance at 8 p.m. Now our temperatures, they're cold. 37 in Norfolk, 34 in Chesapeake, but we're above freezing now in Franklin and Wakefield. 34 in Williamsburg, 36 Wallops Island, a Husky 32, that's a problem. Maybe a little bit of slick spots down there, but 33 Newport News, 38 Virginia Beach. Winds are out of the north, 5 to 15 miles an hour. They're going to stay up today, 10 to 15. And they'll be out of the north all day long, kind of like yesterday, but I don't think we're going to see uh, as much as many, many gusts as we had yesterday. So that's what we're expecting. Let me take a look here and uh, we'll uh, take a look at the uh, forecast for today. And we've got uh, winds up again north 10 to 15. Now the temperatures today are going to be stuck in the 30s, 37 at noon, 39 degrees at 3 p.m. And then tomorrow we got highs in the upper 30s again, but we have sunshine for the weekend, finally. I'm going to talk more about that. We'll track today's rain and talk about how much more rain we could see in just 10 minutes. Madison's in now with traffic. Jeremy, thank you. Continuing to track some minor issues out there. We've got a crash here 264 East by Newtown Road. As you're leaving the 264 634 interchange heading towards the ocean front, just the shoulder blocked off there and some minor delays. We've got another crash 64 East at the interchange, a shoulder blocked off there as well. And you can see it continues just to be a messy, wet morning out there. So if you don't have to leave your house, uh, maybe just stay inside. If you're crossing the water, your three connectors in terms of traffic are looking good. This lift, though, is going to slow you down later on. It's going to be 1130 at the James River Bridge. Don. Madison, thank you. It is 841 still ahead. Speeding woes in a new don't get mad. Get Madison segment. Madison answers questions from a neighbor in Portsmouth concerned about speeders. Plus get answers to your questions about the COVID vaccine. We'll bring you a dose of clarity about how the shot is administered and what happens with any leftovers.
We are back at 844. Every morning we're 